The Apostle Paul, in his going about setting up the church, noticed that there were some schisms in the body. Well, there were some issues as the people had come together and formed. Now, this book was written that the people of Corinth might come to full understanding. Does not matter what you have come up under the banner to be. What matters is that you take first things in consideration. So many times as a church, we forget about what we've been called to do. We can get so busy beautifying and modifying and expanding and adding on and posterizing that we forget all about God called us to people. Oh, can I get a witness? Apostle Paul was trying to allow the church of Corinth to come to a full understanding that I see what your problem is. Mm -hmm. And it's like the problem that we have in today's church. The church had grown, but it had grown to spiritual immaturity. I said spiritual immaturity. The church had grown in such a way that it forgot all about the poverty stricken folk in the church. So many times you've become so high-minded and heavily bound that you forget about those who are at low statue. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Apostle Paul wrote this letter in this first Corinthians to bring their attention back to the evidence of the true creed of the calling on the church to be about our father's business. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Here we find in this 13th chapter, he first of all denotes a word of understanding. He says, now I want to show you the best way to go about being a church of God. Amen. Amen. So many times we have formulas. Am I right about it? Yeah. We have strategies. Am I right about it? Yeah. We have methodologies. Am I right about it? Yeah. But we don't have the spirit of God in our stuff. Right. Don't you know it's very, very hard for a church to plan without God. We sometimes sit down at our little meetings and we organize and plan and then when it don't go right, we want God to come and bless our mess. Or am I talking to anybody this morning? You see, the Bible allows us to know you got the first give honor to God. Oh, come on now. It does not matter that the president of your board might happen to be a banker. It does not matter that the person that's on your ministry committee just happened to be someone in the who's who in the community. It does not matter that the person in your church might be a mayor, a lawyer, or a doctor, somebody that has notoriety in the community. He went on to let them know it does not matter because though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, it profits me nothing. Can I get a witness? The church is a true foundation. I see so many people talking about God's church. I love God's church. See, God's people, we have our faults, but let me tell you something about God's people. God's people will talk about you and still pay your rent. Oh, come on, can I get a witness? God's people will talk about you, but still bring clothes over and food over to make sure you're all right. God's people will talk about you and still put a little something, something in your hand. Why? Because there is love in God's church. But the problem is, as we grow in God's church, we sometimes lose spiritual maturity. The plight of our church, church family in these last 12 years, first of all, we had to learn how to come together to just love each other. You know what I'm talking about. Because my government says all the time, when nothing else could help, it was, it was love that that lifted me, amen? Because sometimes that's all we got. We ain't got two nickels to rub together. That's all we got. We don't have nothing else but, but love, amen? We don't have no answers, but I can just love you through your situation. Then after we learn how to love each other, God let us purchase something together that we might be proud of. Our church edifice, amen. We can have something together. We can build something together. And we can come in the house of God that is beautiful and say, this is what God allows us to occupy until he comes. Amen. Don't get it twisted. It's, it's not your church. It's God's church. Don't get it twisted because you're tired. It don't mean that. That's just a temple what God gives you. Don't get it twisted. It still belongs to God. Can I get a witness? Amen. 
we sometimes get to a place where we lose spiritual maturity because as we grow, the next phase is ministry. Our theme this year is building an army for the Lord because we have now got the anointing power of God to operate and move at his command. Can I get a witness? Here in Corinth, in his 13th chapter, he said, Though I may speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, it profits me nothing. He said, Though I have the gifts of prophecy and I may understand all secret things and all mysteries and knowledge, it still is nothing. It still is nothing. I need to talk to you for a minute. Church family, it's time you need to quit trying to be deep. Come on now. You want to be theologically sound. You want me to exegese a text with a formula of understanding that I pull out the meat of the subject. You want to be able to have a firm foundation of scriptorial knowledge that my seminary uh, understanding might take me and take you to a place where you have now captured the essence of the text. But that don't mean nothing when your neighbor lives right next door and you won't help them. Oh, who am I talking to this morning? You see, sometimes we was better when we was in the hoopty than when we got the Cadillac. Oh, you don't hear what I'm talking about. Sometimes we were better in the hoopty before we got the Mercedes B. Sometimes we were better down the way before we moved uptown. Round town. Got the big house. Can I get a with it? Somehow, when we get high with God, not high spiritually, but when we get high with God and God will bless us with the stuff, we forget who we are. You had somebody roll up on you. On a hot day, you acting like you all that. I'll never forget when I first came out of college and I saw one of my best buddies, Tommy Woods. We used to roll together. We used to wear clothes a lot together. And we used to go to school together. We were great friends. And I come out of college that first year and I had not seen Tommy in years. And I rolled up on Tommy. He said, hey, Tim, what's going on? I said, hello Thomas, how are you today? I'm doing pleasing and well. Been blessed been at the university. And I've been studying there and I'm looking towards my degree. He said, oh dog, give me the real man, what's up with that? How's it down there man, how, you know, give, give me the low down, oh, one more. I said, here's a university where people are coming together, we might slide towards our degree. It must be finished in four years, we might be able to elevate ourselves to a higher level. It must be able to achieve our bachelor's degree, a master's degree, we might be able to come out and conquer the world. I'll never forget that look on his face. You know, like he said. He raised his hand like. He said, look here, I knew you when you were wearing two different tennis shoes. I knew you when you had cardboard in your shoe, you were dragging the foot around. I knew you when you came and bought a shirt from me to go with the pants you had for an outfit when we would come out. Don't you dare try to roll up on me with your university credits, acting like you are. You still the same Tim that was down the way. When my mama and yours used to put their money together because food was short, don't you go that way on me. <laughs> Paul was telling Corinth, now that God has prospered you with a level of prosperity where folk know thy works, you need to lose trying to be deep and understand you might have the gift of prophecy, propheticness. You're able to get deep and look into the heart of the matter. And it might even be that God has touched you to see beyond, uh, to allow somebody to know where they're going prophetically. Uh -huh. But it's nothing unless the Spirit of God moves you to touch the lives of people. Can I get a witness? Oh, y'all been praising God right there. Somebody here been looked over by the church. Y'all be praising God right now. Somebody here has measured you to a level that you have thought that they have dismissed you simply because now you're part of the, not the who's who, but you're part of those who are the have-nots. So many times in our church, I'll never forget, I came to 
one of the 